One of the main reasons human civilization has been able to develop as much as it has is because of our creativity and the ability to build amazing inventions that simplify our lives. Ancient peoples were just as innovative as we are today and developed incredible ways of doing things. Today, we're taking a look at the top 15 most ingenious ancient inventions. Let's start with number 15, the Astrolab. Today, the technology that we carry around everywhere we go makes navigation so simple that we barely even need to know where we are or which way we're facing to get directions to our destination. But in ancient times, things were, of course, far more complicated. Sailors would follow the stars or keep the coastline in sight, but then came an invention that would change everything, the Astrolab, which combined astronomy, navigation, and timekeeping into one place. Originating in ancient Greece around 2200 years ago and later improved by Islamic scholars, an astrolab is made up of a flat disk known as the mater, which houses several movable components that can be adjusted to represent the movement of celestial objects. The most important of these is the reet, a star map that rotates over the mater, which is marked by a coordinate system to represent the sky. By aligning the reet with specific stars or the sun, users could calculate local time, determine their latitude, and even predict astronomical events like the rising and setting of celestial bodies. The Astrolab was a critical tool for navigators and explorers, enabling sea and land voyages with far greater precision. Its use wasn't limited to navigation, though, and astrolabs were also used by astronomers to solve problems related to the positioning of celestial objects, and by Islamic religious leaders to calculate prayer times and the direction of Mecca. Number 14. Aqueducts, Roman Empire There's a reason why most ancient sites were built alongside or close to rivers, and that's because water is one of the heaviest and trickiest resources to transport and provide to citizens. The lack of water in certain regions made them virtually uninhabitable, but Roman engineers came up with an ingenious solution to this problem called the aqueduct. With some still standing to this day, they require an advanced understanding of civil engineering, water management, and urban planning. And constructed from as far back as 2300 years ago, they were designed to transport water from distant sources into cities and towns. The real cleverness of Roman aqueduct engineering lies in the use of gravity flow, which is the principle that allowed water to travel across varied terrains over many miles. The Romans calculated gradients, ensuring the aqueducts maintained a gentle and consistent downward slope. And it was this precision engineering that meant water could be efficiently moved over long distances without the need for pumping technology, which was unavailable. Structurally, Roman aqueducts were incredible things, combining underground tunnels, bridges, and precisely laid pipes where valleys or lowlands needed to be crossed towering bridges and arcades such as the famous Pont du Gard in France or the Segovia Aqueduct in Spain were constructed this way. Similarly, where hills and mountains blocked the path, tunnels were dug to allow the water to continue to flow. The materials used in construction, including Roman concrete and waterproof cement, were essential for the durability and effectiveness of these aqueducts, with many of the structures withstanding the test of time and remaining intact thousands of years later. Roman aqueducts would have a huge impact on the development of urban centers in the ancient world. They enabled the growth of cities by providing a reliable water supply, which in turn supported public hygiene and health, leading to overall prosperity and stability of Roman society. Without them, there's no way the empire would have grown as rapidly or been as dominant as it was for so long. Number 13. The Egyptian Solar Boat the Egyptian solar boat, also known as the solar bark or the Khufu ship, is an amazing artifact from ancient Egypt that shows the civilization's advanced craftsmanship, religious beliefs, and understanding of celestial navigation. Discovered in 1954 at the foot of the Great Pyramid of Giza, near the tomb of Pharaoh Khufu, the boat is one of the oldest, largest, and best-preserved vessels from ancient times. Believed to have been built around 4,500 years ago, it's around 144 feet long and put together from hundreds of pieces of high-quality cedar wood. It was capable of sailing the Nile or even venturing into open waters, although its main purpose was spiritual rather than practical. Rather than transporting goods, it was instead designed to carry the pharaoh through the underworld, navigating across the heavens with the sun god Ra and ensuring rebirth and eternal life. The discovery of the solar barge was as surprising as its design. It was found in a sealed pit near the pyramid, dismantled into over 1,200 pieces, which were then painstakingly reassembled in a process that took several years. This project has allowed experts to study ancient Egyptian shipbuilding techniques, 
and while this one never sailed on the Nile, it's indicative of the ingenious designs that were used at the time and would have enabled travel throughout the empire. Number 12. The Compass, Ancient China One of the most important navigational inventions ever created was the compass, which uses the Earth's magnetic field to let you know which way the direction you're pointing at. Amazingly, the first compasses were made in ancient China, where they were known as Sinan in their earliest forms. Developed during the Han Dynasty around 2200 years ago, the original Chinese compass wasn't actually intended for navigation to begin with, and instead was used in construction so that buildings would be aligned with the Earth's natural energies, the process we know now as Feng Shui. The Sinan was a rudimentary compass consisting of a square base representing the earth and a spoon-shaped lodestone on top that represented heaven. The lodestone, made from a naturally magnetized iron ore, was carefully placed on the square base, and it would align itself along the north-south axis due to the earth's magnetic field. This orientation provided ancient Chinese workers with a way to determine the cardinal directions when aligning buildings, tombs, and other structures in accordance with geomantic principles. The development of the Sinan into a navigational tool happened during the Song Dynasty, several hundred years after they were first invented, which led to the development of the more recognizable magnetic needle compass. This innovation featured a magnetized iron needle floating in water or suspended on a pivot, which was a significant advancement that improved accuracy and practicality for maritime navigation. This design facilitated the expansion of Chinese maritime exploration, trade, and naval capabilities, and would play a crucial role in navigation across vast oceans and waterways. In many ways, it was one of the most important inventions ever, and it fundamentally changed navigation by providing a reliable means to determine the direction, even when landmarks and celestial bodies were obscured. Number 11. The Rotary Kern the production of larger volumes of food was vital to allow for communities to develop, and one of the earliest inventions that made a huge difference was the rotary kern. Dating back to the Iron Age and widespread by the Roman era, this hand-operated mill is made up of two circular stones, the lower one being stationary and the upper one mobile, and is used for grinding grains into flour. The introduction of this design represented a leap forward from the more primitive methods of grain processing, such as pounding grains with a pestle and mortar, and completely changed the availability of food for the communities that had access to them. The design of it is virtually perfect, where the upper stone has a handle and a central hole through which the grains are fed. As the upper stone is turned, the grains are crushed and ground between the two stones, exiting out the outer edges as flour. This process was not only faster, but more efficient than previous methods, allowing for the production of finer flour in greater quantities. The kern stones were often made from hard, abrasive rocks like basalt or sandstone to extend their usage in life and improve grinding efficiency. The widespread use of rotary kerns enabled communities to process grains more rapidly, supporting larger populations and contributing to the development of a more settled agricultural society. Furthermore, the rotary kern then became a household device, central to daily life in many ancient cultures. It allowed families to produce their own flour, which could be used to make bread and increasing self-sufficiency and reducing dependence on centralized milling facilities. Number 10. The Kanat System the Kanat system was another ingenious method of water management and irrigation that originated in ancient Persia over 2,500 years ago. It was this that allowed communities to transport water in a way to support agriculture and to sustain settlements across the Middle Eastern deserts, and its use spread throughout the arid regions of the world, including North Africa, Spain, and even China. A kanat is essentially an underground channel used to transport water from a groundwater source, often an aquifer in the foothills of mountains, to the surface for irrigation and drinking. The system operates entirely by gravity, making use of the natural slope of terrain to guide water from its source to the communities needing it. The construction of a kanat required precise planning and considerable labor. It involves digging a series of well-like vertical shafts into the ground, which are then connected by a gently sloping tunnel. The mother well, the deepest and most critical part of the kanat, taps into the water table. From there, water flows through the tunnel, emerging at the surface many miles away in a location where it can be easily accessed and distributed. The impact of the kanat system on the development of civilizations in desert regions cannot be overstated. It enabled the flourishing of agriculture by providing a steady, reliable water source for the irrigation of crops, therefore supporting larger populations and the growth of cities. 
Today, many canots are still in use, showing just how clever a design they were. By leveraging natural forces to meet human needs without depleting or damaging the environment, it's a technology that works hand-in-hand -hand with nature and serves as a valuable model for modern water management strategies, highlighting the importance of sustainable and adaptive approaches to the challenges posed by dry environments. Number 9. The Telescope, Netherlands We now have a comprehensive understanding of our solar system around us, but this has only been possible in relatively recent human history. For thousands of years, people could only chart the stars they saw from the ground, but then in the 17th century, the telescope was invented. The exact origins of devices like these are debated, though, with claims of rudimentary optical inventions dating back to the times of the Greeks. But the invention of the telescope as we think of it today is credited to Dutch eyeglass maker Hans Lippershey in 1608. Lippershey's groundbreaking device, which he unsuccessfully sought a patent for, consisted of a convex objective lens and a concave eyepiece lens mounted within a tube, allowing for the magnification of distant objects. This novel invention quickly captured the imagination of Europe, with news of it spreading quickly across the continent. Within a year of Lippershey's invention, the Italian scientist Galileo Galilei had constructed his own version. Galileo's improvements upon the original design included a stronger magnification capability, which he achieved by grinding his own lenses. And in 1610, using his improved telescope, Galileo made a series of astronomical discoveries that would completely change our understanding of the universe. He saw the moons of Jupiter, the phases of Venus, the surface of the moon, and the countless stars of the Milky Way providing critical evidence for how the solar system was structured, with the Earth and other planets orbiting the Sun. The invention of the telescope unleashed a wave of scientific inquiry and discovery, enabling astronomers to explore the heavens with unprecedented detail. Over the centuries, telescopes have evolved in complexity and power, from the simple refracting telescopes of the early 17th century to the sophisticated ground and space-based ones of today. All, though, owe their existence to these early instruments and the curiosity and ingenuity of their creators. Number 8. The Odometer, Ancient Greece Odometers are used in countless different places in modern life, mainly in vehicles, to measure the distance that's been traveled. Far from being invented for use in cars, though, the earliest is believed to date back to ancient Greece, showing their advanced grasp of math, mechanic, and geography. Although the precise origins of the odometer are debated among historians, its development is often attributed to some of the cleverest inventors of the period, with those like Archimedes and Heron of Alexandria helping to refine them. The Greek odometer, which was essentially an early form of mechanical computer, was designed to calculate distances traveled by a vehicle. It did so through a system of gears and wheels that converted the rotation of the vehicle's wheels into a measurable linear distance. As the vehicle moved, a gear mechanism would transfer the rotation of the wheel to a pointer or dial, incrementally indicating the distance covered. Some accounts suggest these devices could also drop stones or other markers at regular intervals, providing a physical representation of the distance that's been traveled. This ancient contraption was not just a tool of interest, but served practical and important purposes. It was an instrument in the planning of construction of roads, the mapping of territorial boundaries, and military campaigns, allowing for precise calculations and the allocations of resources. The odometer, it underlined the importance of accurate distance measurement in the ancient world, which was critical to trade, communication, and administration across huge empires. Moving on to number seven, the Artesian Well. Inventions designed to access water have been different across the world, as methods needed to tap the resource from its source vary depending on where it's stored. The Artesian Well, for example, has been utilized for thousands of years and gets its name from the former province of Artois in France, where such wells were drilled by Carthusian monks in the 12th century. The principle behind how they work, though, predates these medieval European examples, with ancient civilizations across the globe recognizing and harnessing the properties of subterranean aquifers. An artesian well operates on the principle of accessing water contained in an aquifer that's trapped between two impermeable layers of rock or clay. The aquifer is recharged from rainwater that seeps into the ground at a higher elevation, creating pressure within the confined layer. When drilled into, this pressure naturally forces the groundwater up the well, often to the surface, without the need for pumping. This natural pressure system is what distinguishes artesian wells from ordinary wells, where the water must be manually or mechanically drawn to the surface. 
They have therefore been a sustainable and efficient means of accessing fresh water for those able to reach an aquifer beneath the ground, and have become crucial for irrigation, drinking, and other domestic uses. In agricultural contexts, artesian wells have transformed dry, barren landscapes into fertile agricultural fields, supporting food production and the sustenance of communities. Over time, the drilling of artesian wells has evolved with technological advancements, allowing for deeper wells and the extraction of water from aquifers of up to a thousand feet beneath the earth. However, the sustainability of these artesian wells depends on the careful management of aquifer recharge rates and the prevention of over-extraction to avoid depletion and the potential for land subsidence. Number 6. The Lighthouse, Ancient Greece Before comprehensive charts were created and readily available, ships relied on navigators who knew the waters they were sailing through to chart a safe course. Even this came with extreme risks though, particularly at night when shallower regions are virtually impossible to see, and this led to the development of lighthouses to provide a permanent warning on major shipping routes. The history of lighthouses stretches back to more than 2,700 years ago, with the ancient civilizations of the Mediterranean being at the forefront of their design and construction. Early lighthouses were typically built on elevated ground or at the entrance to harbors, using open flames such as wood or coal fires as the light source. These beacons not only marked dangerous coastlines and guided ships to safety, but also acted as symbols of civic pride and technological advancement. They were often constructed using durable materials like stone or brick designed to withstand the marine environment. One of the best from ancient times was the Pharos of Alexandria, which was built 2,300 years ago on the island of Pharos in Egypt. It was commissioned by Ptolemy I and completed during the reign of Ptolemy II. This towering structure is considered to be one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, and is said to have stood over 328 feet or 100 meters tall, and featured a fire at its apex to serve as a beacon, with mirrors used to project the light further. Although the exact technology and materials used do remain a subject of speculation, the Pharos of Alexandria set a precedent for lighthouse construction and functionality that would influence future generations. The Roman Empire then made significant advances to lighthouse technology and built many across its coast to aid in navigation and the protection of its maritime interests. Amazingly, one of these, the Tower of Hercules in Spain, is still standing today, showing just how strongly they were built and giving an insight into how the Roman coastline would have once looked. Number 5. The South American Quipu Ancient civilizations around the world developed various different ways of storing information. Some used writing, some passed stories down by word of mouth, and in South America, there was the Quipu. Made up of colored threads or strings that had been woven from cotton or camelid fibers, there would be a main cord from which a number of pendant cords hang. The knots tied into these cords, as well as their position, type, and the color of the strings used all convey very specific information. Scholars believe that the quipus were used for a variety of purposes, from accounting and the census to calendar information and possibly even the narrative histories and legends. The exact methods by which quipus encoded information aren't really fully understood in modern times though, but from examples that remain it's clear they represented a highly developed system. The Inca civilization at its height governed a vast territory along the western coast of South America from modern-day Ecuador and Peru to parts of Chile, Bolivia, and Argentina. The administration of such an empire required a reliable method of record-keeping, especially for tributes and census purposes, and it was the quipu that served as a vital tool in this system. The Spanish conquest of the Inca Empire in the 16th century led to the decline of the quipu as European writing systems replaced the original methods of record-keeping. However, the continuation of quipus in certain remote communities into the colonial period suggests they were more than administrative tools, possibly also serving as narrative functions that tied communities to their histories and cultural identities. Number 4. The Lydian Lion Once human communities had developed to a level where they were producing goods and services to trade with others, bartering systems became commonplace to swap valuable objects between one another. Currencies, of course, would go on to make this process even simpler, and the creation of the first ones was one of the most influential inventions ever. The Lydian lion is believed to be the world's first coin, and it came from the kingdom of Lydia in present-day western Turkey around 2,700 years ago. 
It was made from electrum, which is a naturally occurring alloy of gold and silver that was abundant in the region's rivers, and this choice already showed an understanding of value and rarity that would become central to the concept of money. The coins featured a design, too, with the image of a lion's head on one side, symbolizing the Lydian royal family, and a simple punch mark on the other, which was likely used to help authenticate the coins. The introduction of the Lydian lion as a standardized form of currency would go on to facilitate trade by providing a reliable and recognized value system that could cross regional boundaries. This innovation helped to mitigate the inherent inefficiencies of the barter system, where direct exchange of goods without a common value marker was often tricky and limited by the need for both sides to want what the other was offering. By establishing a common medium of exchange, Lydia not only boosted its own economy, but also laid the groundwork for the complex economic systems that would follow. Further to this, the Lydian lion also marked the moment of the state's emerging role in regulating and controlling the economy. The act of minting coins was a declaration of sovereignty and authority, enabling the Lydian kingdom to influence economic activity, collect taxes more efficiently, and strengthen its control over trade routes. This early form of currency also reflected and reinforced social hierarchies and wealth distribution, laying the foundations for economic systems that we still use today. Number 3. The Hydraulis Throughout history, humans have developed different types of musical instruments to entertain one another with. But rudimentary forms of wind or string instruments were relatively simple to construct with the tools available. It was one of the earliest types of organ that was perhaps the most surprising. Known as the hydraulis, it was invented more than 2300 years ago in one of the city-states of ancient Greece, possibly by the engineer Tisibius of Alexandria. The instrument revolutionized music with its technical complexity and expressive capability, and with a name derived from the Greek words for water and pipe, it used water pressure to regulate airflow through the pipes, which produced sounds of varying pitches, a design that was way ahead of its time. The instrument consisted of a set of pipes, each corresponding to a different musical note, mounted on a wind chest. Beneath this was a reservoir of water connected to a larger air chamber. When the player operated the keyboard, valves would open, allowing air to flow through the selected pipes. The water acted as a stabilizing force, ensuring that the airflow remained constant, thereby producing a clear, sustained tone. This method of sound production was groundbreaking, representing one of the earliest examples of using non-human power sources to produce music. The hydraulis quickly gained popularity in the ancient world, becoming a fixture in various cultural and ceremonial contexts. From public festivals and theatrical performances to religious ceremonies, its ability to produce a wide range of sounds as either soft or more powerful made it surprisingly expressive and versatile, which added to its popularity. Each new civilization would make its own refinements to the instrument, and over time, as technologies and musical tastes evolved, the hydraulis laid the groundwork for the development of the pipe organ, which would become the main instrument for sacred and secular music for centuries, and that's still used in churches and cathedrals around the world to this day. Number 2. Archimedes' Screw the ancient Greek mathematician and inventor Archimedes of Syracuse was known for creating various different inventions to improve life in the city, but arguably the most important was the Archimedes screw, dating to around 2300 years ago. It was a device that was originally designed to aid with irrigation and was an ingenious way of moving water. The screw consisted of a helical surface surrounding a central cylindrical shaft, all of which is encased within a hollow tube. When the lower end is submerged in water and the device is rotated, the water is lifted from a lower point to a higher one, making it an efficient tool for raising water. Now, the cleverness of this is not just its simplicity, but also in its versatility and effectiveness. It was primarily used to irrigate fields, and the design allowed for the easy lifting of water without the need for complex pumping machinery. Beyond irrigation, though, Archimedes' screw found uses in other areas, including removing bilge water from ships, and to this day, the basic principle of the screw has been used in modern industrial processes as well, such as in conveyors for moving bulk materials, wastewater treatment facilities, and even within some types of heat exchangers and air compressors. The fact that the design is still relevant now shows just how an important concept it was, and it's established Archimedes' legacy as one of history's greatest scientists and engineers. 
his ability to combine theoretical knowledge with practical applications has left a lasting impact on the field of mathematics, physics, and engineering, with the screw in particular showing how ancient innovations can continue to influence and inspire modern technology. Number 1. The Antikythera Mechanism the Antikythera Mechanism is one of the most notorious and surprising artifacts that's been found from the ancient world, not just because of its design and precise construction, but because it forced experts to completely reevaluate the level of mathematical and engineering understanding of civilization so long ago. Discovered in 1901 inside a shipwreck off the coast of the small Greek island of Antikythera, this device has been studied by scientists, historians, and technologists ever since and it's thought by many to be the first analog computer to have been built. Dating back to around 2200 years ago, the mechanism is a sophisticated collection of at least 30, but perhaps as many as 100 bronze gears that were fixed within a wooden and bronze frame, which researchers believe was used to predict astronomical positions and eclipses. What makes the mechanism truly special, though, is its design and the precision of its manufacture, which shows a deep understanding of astronomical phenomena and mechanical engineering far beyond what was previously thought possible. Its main function was to model the movements of the sun, moon, and planets according to the model of the universe that was believed at the time, where the Earth is at the center and all the other celestial bodies orbit it. On the front face are two concentric circular scales that show the path of various bodies throughout the sky. The outer ring represents the 365-day calendar, and even though it was made before the Julian calendar was established, the Sophics and the Calypics had already been using a 365-and-a-half-day solar year for a while, meaning it didn't have to account for a leap day. The inner ring was there to represent the different signs of the Greek zodiac. On the rear face, the mechanism has a total of five dials, with the larger two representing the Metonic and Saros calendars and the smaller ones dedicated to tracking other cycles, one of which is thought to be the four-year Olympiad. Having said all that, the mechanism's complexity looks like an 18th century clock, making its existence more than a millennium earlier a true marvel of design. Each gear is crafted with teeth carefully cut to precise specifications. This level of detail suggests that the Antikythera mechanism was not a unique singular invention, but the product of an established tradition of technology that has not survived the archaeological record. When it was first found, it had decayed after years underwater, but modern investigations using techniques such as X-rays and 3D modeling have gradually unraveled some of its secrets. These studies have revealed not only the device's mechanical design, but also the deep astronomical knowledge of its creators, and versions that have been built to those specs have proven to be almost as precise as anything that we use today. Thanks for watching everyone, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you to our channel members.